Building a TCG is a complicated process with many steps forward and often just as many steps back. Looking back at the various games I've made over the years, none of them were made after I started this YouTube channel. Even the game featured in the concluding video of the Essential Elements series was made several years back. This raised a question, are the Essential Elements something that I had only noticed as a player, or are they actually useful for the process of designing a game? Because designing games is fun, having something new to play is fun, and getting an excuse to dive into Pixiv for art is fun, I tried my hand at designing a new TCG, bringing it to a point where it would be ready for wider testing. Deciding to make a game is kind of a terrible place to start, though. Games don't just appear from the either, they have to be about something. This can be a mechanical idea, a flavor idea, or ideally some combination of both. In this case, I was inspired by the Hollow Life Bad End short animation by Mazu Maru, by Fate Stay Night, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, and other anime, and just urban horror and urban fantasy more generally. In the world of this game, while people go about normal, modern lives in a technologically advanced city, an elaborate fantasy world is lying just beneath the surface. A live streamer may be possessed by an ancient deity, and is just one bad day away from unleashing an apocalypse. The office tower down the street might be a tech bro cult delving into the secrets of immortality by studying eldritch beings, while positioning their company in secret to be number one in the post-death world. And the quiet library just off the local university campus might be a gathering place for truths far beyond human comprehension. Magic the Gathering and other games have explored somewhat similar game space, principally in their double-faced cards. But for this game I wanted something a little bit more free and open, and I quickly settled on there being two main card types. Front cards would represent fairly ordinary, everyday characters. Priests, scientists, lawyers, and occasionally robots and other light sci-fi, but nothing too fantastical. Reverse cards, on the other hand, would be quite the opposite, otherworldly demons, fey, and eldritch abominations. All of these supernatural beings would be aspects of a single eldritch lord, an ancient god your deck would be working to unleash. Although these lords could not die in a traditional sense, they could be sealed away, and your goal was to seal away the power of the opponent's eldritch lord before the opponent could seal yours. Seals could be represented by another card type, which could also potentially double as the game's resource engine. Most of this all came together over the course of an hour-long walk, with the last couple details fleshed out as I recorded all of these ideas into a text document. This created the basic skeleton for the game. There were front cards, reverse cards, and seals. Reverses could be placed beneath fronts, and they were only revealed by the opponent forcing them into the open with a seal. Reverses could attack, and battles between reverses would come down to simple power numbers, but fronts, as ordinary people, would be utterly defenseless against opposing resources unless, of course, they were possessed by a reverse of their own. The basic flow of gameplay would involve players using their front to build resources in the early game, while playing at seal per turn to try and eventually reveal the location of the opponent's Eldritch Lord, who would be hiding under a front just like all the other reverse cards. As they built their board, they would also be simultaneously weakening their opponent's Eldritch Lord so that it could be eventually defeated by a regular attack. To force the Lord onto the field, each seal would also reduce the opponent's hand size by one, until eventually both players ended up with a hand size of zero. Since the Lords would start in players' hands, they would eventually need to be played out somewhere onto the field in order to avoid being discarded and the player just losing that way. So with all of this coming together, I now had a life system a resource system, a combat system, effect interaction, and a card economy. All I needed to finish was a faction system, and I was good to start making cards and testing the game. Designing the faction system was definitely one of the more fun parts of the process, since I was able to really delve into the flavor of the game world I was creating. I ended up with four colors, divided into two defensive colors and two offensive colors, as well as two colors that were focused on board advantage, and two that were more focused on card and resource advantage. It would be an interesting video down the road, but I do like how four color systems are easily able to divide into a 2x2 two two grid like this. It makes visualizing their core gameplay philosophy really, really easy and straightforward. 
Alongside the mechanical identities, on another hour-long walk, I came up with the philosophical identities for each of these factions as well, detailing how they would interact with the eldritch beings that were manifesting out in the world. We understand our world through data. From the abacus to the microchip, the data we can access creates a limit of our understanding. The beings will shatter the barriers of knowledge, and through them we will know the universe. Prosperity is limited by death, not just of the individual, but also of the ecosystem, and ultimately of the universe itself. The beings are the key to unlock a world without death. A world of infinite prosperity. Our perceptions, our thoughts, and our decisions are all shaped by our physical reality. Confined to this reality, true freedom is a myth. The beings will set us free, and in this world of true freedom, we shall uncover the truth of our own minds and the shape of our own will. Man shaped God in the image of man. By looking to the gods beyond, we shall understand the true face of the divine, and understand our true role within the universe. With a solid flavor idea and all of the mechanical game systems ready to go, I designed just enough cards to build a pair of test decks. A blue-white defensive deck and a black-red ramp deck that was a little more aggressive. Although there were a few of the game systems I still wasn't 100% sold on, the game was in a spot where it was ready to test. Oftentimes, testing is going to surprise you. A system you thought was rock solid may not actually play out all that well, or it might require a lot of design compromises that may not ultimately be worth it. Alternately, sometimes the system you are on the fence on turns out to work so well, you start designing all of your other systems around it. Before you throw away too many of your ideas, it's usually good to start testing early, just to see how each of these ideas are actually going to play out. Spoiler alert, this game ended up going through a ton of revisions, and very few of the rules from the initial text document ended up making its way all the way through to the current version. Each rule change, however, does give interesting insight into the forces that can affect the design of the game, and we'll go over those in future videos. The one thing that didn't change, though, was all of the flavor work I had done, from the urban fantasy atmosphere represented by two card types that could flip back and forth, to the faction designs that guided not only the division of effects, but also the philosophy and appearance of each faction. This all provided a vital anchor that all of the other game decisions could ultimately be judged on. Did a rule or mechanic work to advance the core flavor? If it did, it was worth keeping around, even if all of the other mechanics had to be changed to make it work. If it didn't, then if it was causing any issues in gameplay at all, it could be pretty safely discarded. Especially when there were parts of the game that were not working out, this gave me a really solid goal that kept pulling the game forward, even when it felt like the game was starting to come apart at the seams. Until the next time, best of luck finding a strong central idea for your game, and have a fantastic day.